Good afternoon, everybody. Just an update on my life out here. The car is fixed. We took it to the mechanic the other day. I never quite gave an update on it. They did a good job. But one thing I've noticed about mechanics here is that they never quite finish the job. I mean, the job is done in terms of the suspension is fixed, but they'll do something like leave a mud guard off that I have to fit myself or, you know, a flap or, I don't know, a screw will be missing. And it's like, ah. Also, there's something else that they do here in the Philippines, which is kind of funny. I've never seen it anywhere else. When they finish a repair here, it doesn't matter how big the repair is, they give you back all the old parts. When I say all, I mean literally all. Look, broken rubber boots, suspension, rubber rings that are broken, even the old shock mounts in there, the bump stops, everything. They give you them all back. It's a heavy box as well. And now I'm gonna have to find somewhere to recycle that. Or oh, I've got no idea what you're supposed to do with like old car parts. I mean, I get the concept. They show you that the work has been done. I mean, for me personally, I just want the car to be fixed. I guess it's an additional way to prove that the work is finished, but it is just something that I've noticed out here that I've never really seen in the West. Now the dilemma is how do I dispose of said car parts? <laughs> Things have been going okay here for me, but one thing I've noticed is that despite not having a story here and not having any kind of dad responsibilities, I still don't really seem to have time to get anything done. I mean, like, this is a mission. And I think when you add all of Sasha's responsibilities that she normally takes care of, and now mine, because obviously I'm the only person here, all the extra time I thought I would gain to get work done and to get, I don't know, some personal projects done, are just not there. So I'm really having to try and manage my time better. There just doesn't seem to be enough of it. I am off. I'm gonna go and get some food. I haven't eaten anything yet. This is my driver's point of view of Shargal right now. Very beautiful day. Look at the sunshine. I feel like someone's burning something over there, over the farms. Very pretty. Fuel light is on. Need to get some petrol, but I'll do that later. I'm so hungry. I'm going to go straight for food. Very annoying. <laughs> this is the first day I've been out since General Luna, and the place I wanted to eat at is closed. And this is one problem with living on the island. Nothing is clear. I chose specifically this place because it wasn't supposed to be closed today and the other place I wanted to go is closed today and they're both closed. So I've driven up here without eating, without having any coffee. It's now like almost the end of the day. <laughs> like the sun is going to go down in a few hours. And I was like really looking forward to it. But there's no way to pre-check if anything's going to be open. You go on people's Instagram pages and that's probably as best as you can go. I did notice as I was driving up here though that all of the fuel stations were shut. I don't know why. It's not a public holiday today, I don't think. Anyway, I need to decide what I'm going to do. Okay, I've figured it out. There's an island-wide power cut. That's why the petrol stations were closed. That's why this massive generator is making so much noise. But at least it's running. This ATM here isn't running because it doesn't have a generator. This is one of the downsides of having solar. <laughs> you don't know when everyone else hasn't got power. I wonder if the schools are running today, if they have a power cut all day. There's only one electricity provider on this island and if they go down, then so does everything. So that's one thing that definitely needs improving in terms of infrastructure here. If they're gonna start bringing loads of people from different countries, which kind of already happens, but if it gets worse, if it gets more people here, we don't really have the infrastructure for it, especially not with electricity. I've decided I'm just going to go to the local Sari Sari store, pick up some vegetables, go home and cook. What else can I do really? Having a full solar powered off-grid house is one of the best things you can do on this island because it changes everything in terms of your lifestyle. Sari Sari shopping was a success. I managed to pick up enough food for the next few days or so. Uh, maybe even longer than that and it only cost me 610 pesos which is under 10 british pounds it's just over 10 us dollars here are some of the things that i've got carrots potatoes sweet potatoes garlic whole pumpkin i've got a couple of lemons apple orange two packets of fresh coconut milk in there i've also really been enjoying adding this local vinegar to my food which gives it a tang and it's actually a little bit fermented as well, so good for the guts. So despite not having the most successful day, it doesn't really matter. Poppy, you happy? You've had the air conditioning all day, haven't you? Your solar powered house. Well, I'm going to do some cooking now, so I'm going to put the phone away so I don't get distracted. Poppy, I'll make you some dinner as well. And yeah, that'll be it. Let's find out what Sasha's up to. 
I see where they're going. That's so weird to sit in there on Sunday City. Good morning everyone. We're having a day out with Cam and Auntie Shell and Leonie and Devon today. We're at a really cool farm and play area. Kids are having a great time. There's a little um quite sure where he's going. Riding a horse. Right down. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, this way. Oh, I'm Story's in a sky tunnel. <laughs> Story. It has been nice for me to look through the footage of Story hanging out with her cousins in England same cousins that came out here and spent time on the island it's very big contrast and i'm glad that story can enjoy that balance between the two worlds it really does make a big difference to us as a family to be able to provide her with both these experiences it is very dark and peaceful out here just me in the moonlight poppy's evening walk there have been a few occasions where sasha has said she wasn't sure if she was going to film a day out or something but there have been many moments I would have missed had we not captured some of these just simple things kids bouncing around in a playground in the UK and for me to be able to listen to the different sounds the different birds look at the western seasons see what people are wearing in the park and hear the different accents and voices again it's funny how my home country where I was born has now become almost kind of exotic to me Whereas this is my normal now, and that is abnormal to me. So I'm glad to be able to give Story that gift. Oh, I haven't seen a single bunny. This is a really cool park. Look at the size of it. I didn't touch you. I didn't touch you. I didn't touch you. Tony, what are you doing? Thank you. Come on, rabbit guards. <laughs> right, Poppy, I think we should head back in. It's getting quite hot out here despite being in the middle of the night. There was another day out where Sasha actually went down to Bath, which is one of the most beautiful parts of the UK. And I did say to her before she left, like, at least grab some pictures of that place because it would be a shame for us to not preserve that memory of story in Bath. Highly recommended location if anyone is planning on going to the United Kingdom. Come on, Poppy, I'm sweating. I'm sweating in the middle of the night. This is crazy. Can we go back in now? The longer Poppy stays out here, the longer Shalako will stay out here too. He's like her guardian. There he goes off into the darkness. <laughs> I don't think Poppy's quite ready to go back in yet.
Good morning everyone from Essex, England. It's a bit of a wild weather day outside today. We've had it all. We've had blue skies, sun, hailstones, rain, and now it is super windy. It is my good friend Jill's birthday. Actually, it was yesterday, but we didn't get to see each other yesterday. So we're spending the day together today. And me and Story have just set out a little birthday table for her here. She's on her way round and we're going to go out for lunch together. Story's just writing her a card, but we've got her little gift. How's your card coming along? Good. Yeah? What? Magical 40. You open the card. Wow. I'm still finishing my cartoony horse. It's lovely. Well done. To Jill, happy birthday. I hope you have a lovely birthday. Just so you know, the cake was from Tesco's. We got you a lemon cake. Yum. I can't wait to do pottery with you and Mummy. Maybe they have a horse. <laughs> Once again, hope you have the best birthday ever. Oh, lovely. Nice card story. So as story revealed in the card there, we're heading to a pottery painting cafe. Hopefully they have space because I haven't booked anything, but I'm thinking it will be okay because it's not Easter school holidays anymore. All the children have gone back to school here, I think. So it hopefully will be quite quiet and we'll be able to just like be a walk in and paint some pottery this afternoon. Jill's coming. Jill's coming! I'm so excited! Yeah, I'll show you around in a minute. Yeah. Hello! Oh, it's a cake! Oh, 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 thank you! you. Happy birthday to you! Jill. Yay! Happy birthday to you! Oh, thank you! Oh, thank you! I didn't get you a candle because I didn't have a lighter. Oh, I had a candle at home! Really good drawing story. Yeah, I know yeah. you're very good at drawing. Yeah. I like oh that's really cute. So you've got your other picture you drew me of <laughs> a little un unicorn little horse or something. Oh, well, I've got so. your birthday gift. Oh, well. yeah. It's because I've been holding on to it for so long. Oh what is this? Oh that's so sweet. I love that. Oh, it's nice colours. And you know it's weird because I always have like so from Tesco's. Really? <laughs> Ginger chop. I haven't tried that. Oh, that's the nice one. I think they look. I think they all look good. Yeah, the blingy ones. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Ooh, we just had a little gift-giving <laughs> ceremony in the flat, and now we are back outside, and we're heading out for our lunch. And it started raining again. <laughs> Document in the morning. All right, in Jill's oh, little from a bag. mint car. Yay. It's very sweet in here. <laughs> <laughs> Off we go. Oh look, your phone matches. Perfect. <laughs> Zipping up. Oh, <laughs> almost. Although it's nice blue sky now. We've gone from rain to blue no, really. sky. Come on then. Why did you trap me in this trap? Oh, come on. Yeah. Ah. Mm. Oh, maybe 23. Maybe you can use yeah. 23. Which could do. Could have tear eyes. Maybe mint eyes would be a bit weird. That'd be a bit weird. We just had a really lovely lunch in the cafe, the pottery cafe. We all chose a little ceramic paint. <laughs> Story went for a rabbit. <laughs> I went for a gecko because I thought it would be nice in our house in the Philippines. Lots and lots of geckos and lizards around. You can put it on the wall. And Jill made a lovely little unicorn for her niece. We're going to feed the ducks. Yeah. We bought some duck food. I felt some hail on my head. Crack snacks. <laughs> you know the beautiful oh, little yeah. pond. Right, some ducks pond. over there. <laughs> Jill's prepared. <laughs> Oh, I forget what these ones are called. 
Department Puzzle Ducks. Like doves. They were selling some duck food in there as well. So I got started with some of the quack snacks and we went to the pond and had a little duck feeding session. But it has turned very cold again. It's nine degrees. It feels really icy and it started to rain. Jill's having a bit of rolly issues up ahead. We're walking back to the car now. Yeah, that's hail. I do, it is hailing again. For the second time today, we're sheltering in a little Victorian tunnel. <laughs> a little alleyway. It is icy wind and we're trying to just to ride out the rain. We're back at our little apartment and we're going to have birthday cake. Put on the birthday lights. Flag. Oh, that is flag. Thank you. That's my birthday cake. Enjoy. <laughs> Everyone knows it's your birthday Yay. cake because it's got a flag. Exactly. Good afternoon, world. I'm going to try and see if I can get this fixed. I'm at Ate in the town of Burgos up north. It's very quiet up here today. And annoyingly, I've got a new car problem. Look. Uh, the struts that keep the boot lid open are not holding anymore, so I'm gonna have to buy some more parts for that. This car's getting old. Oh, not this one. This is not ours. How about this one? That feels okay. Yeah. Yeah, that one's alright. I just had a chat with the ladies from Ate and they are going to make a new fabric for my laundry basket. I love these guys, they're so amazing. They can really change everything, you know. You don't have to order anything off island, you can get it done right here. The fabric is all good, high quality as well. So I'll probably come back next week to collect that and I'll show you when I do. If you don't know already, this is a part of the nature kits of Shargao. So the recycling studio that we are involved in and also this is all part of the same umbrella. It's an amazing initiative and I think in the future there will be more initiatives like this that will be linked to the recycling studio for example if they can make products that can be sold in maybe like a small coffee shop they'll maybe link those two things together there's many ideas that we can do as soon as we get the studio open so if you don't know what we're talking about we are raising money to try and see if we can reopen the recycling studio here in Burgos and then turn the trash on the beaches into new products, upcycled products to use. And I think it will be a similar thing like this. There'll be like a little shop which will be separate from the recycling studio. So I'm excited to see that come together. We've already raised over $2,000, which is amazing. And we're gonna keep on pushing to see if we can get the roof on that building. Hello, sweetie. Oh, scared. That's okay, relax. Just came to look at the studio. Still looking worse for wear. It's still no roof, people. We are in desperate need of funding for this place. It is hard to imagine this place turning into a bustling hub of recycling for the community, but it's definitely possible. And a huge thank you to everybody who's donated so far. We are going to be doing like a proper update probably next week. I'll have a word with Sunny and we can find out exactly what the timeline might be for the roof to be put on, or at least to begin, because obviously you need to make sure you've got the right people in place. We want to make sure that the right people get hired. Everything needs to be done properly and legitimately so you guys can see that your money went to the right place and actually perform the task that everyone wants it to do, which is to get this place up and running and recycling. I'm feeling very much ready for my one meal a day. So I've come up to Colic Bebo. I got myself a mungo wrap, which is delicious, and a couple of other dishes too. It's so nice to be in this place, especially when the sun is setting. It's a very pet friendly place. <laughs> it's always funny to be around the animals. I'm absolutely full up now. So full, but it's worth it. I won't be eating again until tomorrow. It's been going well. I've been enjoying doing one meal a day. I've been mixing it up a bit and doing 23 hours and one hour. So 23 hours fasting, one hour eating, and then 20 hours and four hours eating, and then sometimes a full 24 hours. I'm doing all of this because of skin health and because of aging and autophagy and stuff like that. So it's not for like weight loss for me at all. I've got barely any fat on my body for me it's about a general health reset and just learning about fasting is fascinating to me so it is a lot easier than it sounds and I'm enjoying it a lot this is my point of view right now 
beautiful, beautiful shore girl. I'm going to drive back to Poppy and see how she's doing. So this time that Sasha and I have spent apart has been quite an eye opener for me. I feel like an observer because I am watching over a diary of sorts from England and I remember how it feels to be there but it really does make me notice the subtle and somewhat not subtle differences between life here as a foreigner in the Philippines. You know those silly things that you don't really think are a thing like what I mentioned about the car at the beginning of this vlog mechanics putting the parts back in the car these are little parts of immigrant life like when you move to a foreign country that most people wouldn't really be talking about because they are not your big picture move thoughts these are things that you notice after you've been here for a long while Sorry. even the weather just seeing those hailstones i haven't seen hailstones for a very long time and they're not good, they don't feel good, <laughs> but it's interesting to see them again. It's interesting to see Sasha and Story looking so cold. The chicks don't care. And then comparing that to the lifestyle that we live out here and how if I was sitting in the UK right now looking at this life, how exotic this would seem. And yet as I think about it, perhaps too much, overthink it, I start to think that the UK is becoming exotic again. It's a strange dynamic and it's a big part of moving abroad. No matter what age you are, you will notice these things. Some people manifest that in the way that they moan about stuff. Some people see it as more of a kind of awakening. But either way, it's good to embrace the differences between the East and the West and find a good balance between the two. That was cool. I didn't know I didn't do that. Spin around. I need to start cooking dinner. It's gonna be a long evening of cooking for Poppy and for me. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna chill. Yes, Poppy. Yes, yes, yes. You do live a pampered life, don't you? You sweet dog. This is nice. Poppy and I are just watching a bit of Apple TV. I like it when she lies next to me like this. Proper lap dog. And today's shout out goes to Now or Never. Huge thank you to you for becoming a member of our channel, watching the weekend vlogs, see that you've been a member for nine days. Thank you, you're a new person. <laughs> and you can see that the badge changes the longer you've been a member for. So when you make a comment or something like that, you get a little badge next to your name to show that you're a member of Eight Miles From Home. And we can see your comments come higher up in the stream. You get access to different perks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It makes a huge difference. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like and share. And we will see you in the next video. Bye.